Hey everyone, Sean from Crafted Elements here and I'm pretty stoked to make this video today because these are perhaps the coolest molds we've ever come up with. Obviously we have over 130 different variations of our of molds in our line for resin artists and woodworkers, but generally they're either used by woodworkers or resin artists. Typically a resin artist won't um, you know, integrate wood in a resin art specific mold, which is a mold that might have designs or shapes, anything that's not really flat. Um, there's not really any molds on the market that we've seen that kind of integrate the two. So essentially what we wanted to come up with is kind of a hybrid system for people who are making wood and resin security boards to add that extra layer of coolness, that extra layer of depth. All these uh, boards that you're seeing right here are made only with these molds and resin and wood, of course. No CNC machine, no laser cutters, no templates, nothing. All the features in these are made just with the resin and with the molds because these molds have built in reliefs or inlays or emboss, emboss designs, which is why they're, we're calling them our inlay molds for essentially lack of a better term. Now, the first three of these we've come out with uh, are as follows. We've got our hexagon inlay mold, our lagoon inlay mold, which is essentially a tiered pond, um, which is like kind of like a, to represent like a topographical map, which I think is gonna be really popular amongst ocean artists and, and resin artists to make sort of more in-depth beach scenes and ocean scenes. Um, and then this guy, we have our golf ball slash hole-in-one mold, which is pretty self-explanatory. That is not a real golf ball. It's made with the uh, relief that's in the resin, which is very, very cool. So what I'm going to do is actually walk you through the process of making these exact boards uh, because it is a multi-step process. It isn't as simple as, you know, just throwing wood and resin into a mold, demolding it, sanding it, and done. You basically have to take, you have to make it, take it out, flip it over, backfill it. There's a couple of different stages, but inherently they have a higher perceived value. You are going to stand out with something like this. When you have something that's got a cool design or inlay, something that's going to set it apart from the crowd, so to speak, you can charge more, not only because it costs more for you to make in terms of your time, but it just has a higher perceived value because of that coolness factor. So again, I want to start now by looking at the production of these three boards using these three new molds. Now, depending on what time you are watching this video, it is May 2023 right now. These are our first designs. We may actually have more uh, inlay mold designs. So I'd recommend you check out our website at craftedelements.com to see the collection of inlay board molds we have. Right now, they are 18 by 12 by one and a quarter inch deep, which gives you enough to, of course, use a significantly sized piece of live edge wood. And effectively, after trimming, planing, sanding, all that, end up with an inch or, or more thickness of final board. Let's go to the video to watch how each of these are made, and hopefully that will answer any questions you have about our new inlay molds. All right, guys, I'm gonna do a play-by-play -play format for this. So I've got our hexagon mold, uh, and it's really important that you get a good mold release spray on all the surfaces so you do get a good release from this resin. Now I've got some um, walnut here that I've pre-cut, and it's going in the mold upside down, right? Because the bottom of the mold is the top of your piece because of those inlays that we're using, right? There's no other way to do that with a silicone mold. So just know that you're working kind of bottom up. I've poured some total thick set in there and then a quick demold a couple of days later and you can see their design is beautifully embedded in there. Now the half hexagons are obviously exposed to the edge of the board. So to fill those, you're gonna to need to put a barrier up. So tape, tuck tape. Uh, I'm just using some regular um, like painter's tape here and uh, to create kind of a, a barrier for the resin, mixing up some Total Boat resin with some green apple pigment from Black Diamond here. Doesn't matter how kind of rough you do this, uh, because remember you're gonna plane this thing after as I'm doing right now. I'm gonna run this thing through the planer a bunch of times to make sure we get all the uh, resin set level with the wood. And then once I take it out, blah, ready to sand. So I'm gonna go a quick, uh, put a quick hole in it rather for kind of a grip, just using a hole saw and then I'm going to chamfer the edges with our router bit. And of course, doing the inside of that grippy part as well. So yeah, almost ready for sanding. Sanding is a boring part, and this probably took about an hour, but I've sped it up to about 15 seconds. But yes, sanding from 120 to about 1,000 grit. And then we're applying some Total Boat wood honey, and voila, pops really, really nicely. You can see that depth, it's, it's actually quite amazing. I think these, board, these molds are so cool. Uh, with built in hex cons. It's very modern, kind of edgy, and you can do some really cool contrasting stuff like that purple and green there. So, again, this is the hexagon inlay mold. 
All right, now we're looking at the lagoon mold. So this is essentially a tiered kind of topographical map looking mold that looks like either a pond or lagoon. Now for this one, I wanted to try something different. So I actually wanted to do tiered wood as well. So I actually have two three quarter inch pieces of uh, live edge Manitoba maple that I'm gonna to glue together here to make a thicker piece and actually give me a tiered shelf similar to that tiered level of the mold. I'm using some total boat fix it again, which is good for one, one and a quarter inch pores, perfect for this height. And I'm just tinting it with a little bit of uh, pinata pigment, which is like an alcohol based pigment. Same thing as before, spring your mold release, making sure you get over all those surfaces. So you get really, really good demolding. You can see I've got the uh, Manitoba maple all cut. I'm weighing it down. I'm gonna pour some total boat fix set to fill that entire mold up. Uh, again, right over that inlay. Uh, because eventually when we demold this, we're going to then backfill that inlay. So speaking of demolding, it comes out really, really easily. Uh, pops out, that's the beauty of these silicone molds, of course. And you can see that tiered thing. Now, I can actually just leave it like this. If you want to have like a, I don't know, salsa dish or like chocolate or olives or whatever, you could actually have that as an integrated dish. But in this case, I'm not. I've mixed up four colors of Total Boat Resin with a variety of black diamond pigments, going from darker, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, very light, just to kind of simulate the depth of the water, the depth of the lagoon. I'm gonna really leave this up to the artist again to figure out what the best way is to do this. I don't really love the way it turned out, but it kind of shows you an example of what you could do here. And again, you could just not fill that all together and you can make it an integrated dish if, you're, if your heart so desires. So again, we're gonna bring it over to the planer because now we wanna get the inlay, level with the wood, level with the rest of the resin, and we're gonna do both sides to get it all nice and level. I'm gonna take it to the table saw, trim off the excess edges, any pieces that don't look so good, we're taking it off of the table saw. Then we'll bring it over to the router table again using that chamfering bit and just get a nice kind of edge, uh, rounded edge on it. And then once that's done, get back to sanding, which I freaking love, no, I hate, um, which is why I'm fast forwarding it really, really fast. But again, we went to about a thousand grit. And then again, total about wood honey, good stuff, really easy, can't mess it up. And it just looks amazing, makes the wood pop, makes the resin pop, buff it off, and it looks like that. So last inlay mold I'm gonna demo is a golf hole in one. It is a four and a quarter inch regulation size golf hole with a half golf ball embedded into it. So again, spring the mold release, fitting the wood. In this case, you need to actually use that almost full inch and a quarter because you have such a deep dish. And of course that, that ball is pretty huge. So you can't get away with like a three quarter inch piece of wood in here. But again, I'm gonna put a thick piece of wood in there and I'm gonna start by filling up that golf ball with probably just white resin. Once that's set, it doesn't even have to be set, it could just be tacky so it's not gonna mix. Pour whatever other color you want or do a clear layer and lay stuff in there. In this case, I did green. For some reason, it turned out like blue green, like a teal, but whatever, you get the point. I'm doing green grass. Um, and the same thing as before, I could technically leave it open as a dish and it could be a functional dish in that security board. But in this case, I'm gonna just backfill it with some clear total boat resin. And once that's set, the next day, run it through the planer and get it all level. Now, I think in hindsight, it would actually look really, really cool if you did a little small layer of uh, brown resin to simulate the dirt in the hole and then backfill it with clear, but I didn't think about that when I did this video. So we're just gonna trim it up really quickly on the table saw. Same as before, just getting rid of any sort of excess edge or whatever unsavory stuff that may have come up uh, in the process. And then run it through the same uh, chamfering bit on our render table. And then once that's done, going to that very favorite part of sanding, starting with 120 grit. And in this case, I worked up to about 1200 grit. I could go higher to get some higher clarity, but you need to go 1200 grit or higher in this because you wanna see through the resin to see that golf ball. Going to 300 grit, it's gonna look not so good. Um, or you could just flood coat it. You could basically flood coat any of these and get it to really, really pop. But in this case, I chose to go up to 1200 grit and I think the results speak for themselves. So yeah, there's that golf uh, hole in one board done. All right guys, well that's pretty much it for our inlay molds video. I hope you found it educational and hopefully by now you'll now know how to use our new inlay molds in that multi-step production process to make very cool boards like these. Now we of course we want to hear your ideas as well because we do want to have uh, a series of inlay molds coming out. So what we want to do is if you enjoy these and you think you would actually have a use for them in your shop or in production or whatever or at, in your art, uh, then we want to know what other inlays we could do. So if you've got some cool ideas, make sure you mention them in the comments below and if enough people want the same thing, we'll probably make it. Otherwise, guys, thank you for watching. And again, you can get these molds as well as the other bajillion molds that we have at Crafted Elements at craftedelements.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and happy making as usual.